show your support. Follow me on Twitter. Hello, I am that British guy, and to carry on this weekend's bumper load of videos, this is another booking video. Specifically, this is going to revolve around NXT versus NXT UK. One thing to say before we properly begin, we are going to have to kind of make a couple of tiny little tweaks to the actual timeline. First of all, after the events of TakeOver Toronto, there was obviously another tag team match between the Street Profits and Undisputed Era, and the Undisputed Era ended up winning the belts. Forget that, that doesn't happen, the belts are currently still with the Street Profits. But that aside, let's dive into the video. So we are in kind of the timeline that I said, the Street Profits are still the tag team champions, and we're in the time of year that we are in right now, post Toronto. And instead of defending their belts against the Undisputed Era, they kind of hold an open challenge for anybody to come out and try and take the belts off of them and enter Fabian Eichner and Marcel Bartel. We have not seen them on NXT TV for quite some time, and I very much like the pair of them. Let's have them come down and challenge for the tag team titles. We have a very nice competitive match, but towards the end they get a little bit too healy, a little bit too carried away and the referee ends up kind of throwing the match out either because of a disqualification or a count out or some kind of we're just not following the rules here and they kind of get in the referee's face and scare him away and they just kind of keep beating down on the Street Profits and the Street Profits start fighting their way back into things and Alexander Wolf comes down. It's now three on two. And unfortunately, they get completely done over by the numbers game. And as these three are kind of getting one over on the Street Profits, out walks Volta onto the stage with the United Kingdom title around his waist or over his shoulder, however, with his coat there. And he doesn't get in the ring, he just sort of stands at the top of the ramp, just kind of watching what these other three are doing. Imperium are here, and they have the NXT UK title, or the United Kingdom title with them, obviously. He will be defending that against Tyler Bate at TakeOver Cardiff. Let's say he successfully does that and holds on to the belt. So yes, we have a very nice three on two beat down and then at the end all of Imperium are at the top of the ramp all kind of in their pose along in one line with their hands behind their back. That is kind of step one to NXT UK making their presence known back on NXT TV. Now I know Pete Dunne has kind of popped in um, we can kind of maybe forget about him a little bit, apart from obviously his Toronto match. And Rhea Ripley has recently turned up and challenged Shayna Baszler. Let's kind of pretend that didn't happen either, and we'll have to kind of put a pin in that and come back to that maybe in the new year. Sorry, Rhea Ripley fans. Now, one other thing we did get recently was the match between Killian Dane and Matt Riddle. We can let that kind of go on as normal. Matt Riddle is still kind of laid out with an injury, and Killian Dane carries on going on a bit of a tear. When Matt Riddle does kind of finally make his return, he puts out a challenge to Killian Dane to kind of even the score. Killian Dane effectively doesn't want anything to do with Matt Riddle anymore. As far as he is concerned, he has laid him out, he has beaten him comprehensively in the middle of the ring and kind of set him on the sidelines for a while. He is moving on to bigger and better things. He doesn't have time for Matt Riddle, so Matt Riddle kind of has to take his frustrations out on whoever really gets in his way on the roster. Any kind of lower mid-card kind of heels and after racking up a one or two wins here or there, 
he finally is confronted by Alexander Wolfe. And earlier in that episode when they face off against each other, we can just have a little moment of Killian Dane and Alexander Wolfe kind of crossing paths, not really properly interacting with each other, but just kind of a nice, like, wry smile and an acknowledgement of their time back when they were part of Sanity together. And just as Matt Riddle is about to win his match against Alexander Wolfe, we get no kind of interference from Killian Dane. He is well away from the situation. But the other three members of Imperium make their presence known, cause a distraction, and Alexander Wolfe is able to beat Matt Riddle. Bearing in mind he is still not entirely 100%. He has been back a little while and has racked up a couple of wins here and there. But he is still maybe only about 90-95% healed. So once Wolf takes advantage of his still kind of recovering midsection, he is able to put him away and win. And then kind of like Vultures, the other two guys, again Walters not really getting involved, he's just kind of watching. But Eichner and Bartel make sure they get involved and it's a 3 or one beatdown until the Street Profits come out and kind of even the situation that sends Imperium kind of packing. They just kind of retreat safely as the Street Profits hold the ring with Matt Riddle. So now we have kind of three guys up against the four guys of Imperium. And what we then get in a few weeks' time is a six-man tag. Again, Fulton not really getting involved. He's just sort of there. But Wolf, Eichner and Bartel will be facing off against the Street Profits and Matt Riddle. And you guessed it, the one extra guy manages to give them the win in this six-man tag. Walter lays out Matt Riddle on the outside of the ring. So it's then kind of a three-on-two situation. Obviously while the referee's back is turned or he's kind of been laid out briefly. So Matt Riddle is kind of out of the rest of the match. We get a three on two situation and Imperium are able to fairly comfortably win that. And then they carry on their beat down four on three. And this time Volta is kind of getting his licks in as well. That is until we see the return of Mr. Johnny Gargano. We have not seen him since TakeOver Toronto. There have been a couple of video packages hinting that he might be going off to the main roster. A couple that he is kind of deciding to take a bit of time away. So they're kind of really muddying the water. You're not really sure if and when he's going to come back, whether he's going to insert himself back into the title picture. But he returns here. And we are only a few weeks away from the next TakeOver event. And he finally makes his return and evens the score and kind of helps beat down Imperium and really kind of properly even the score here. Not just kind of sending them safely retreating, but really beating down on them. Not so much Walter, but certainly the other three guys. Johnny Gargano really kind of takes it to the three of them. And he sort of says to them and the crowd that he's been watching what they've been doing and as the kind of spiritual voice and leader of NXT and the locker room, he is sick and tired of these guys coming in here, throwing their weight around and kind of trying to impose their will on NXT. Their NXT UK guys... Go back to the UK and do what you want to do over there. That's your brand. Stay the hell away from NXT. And effectively what we get here is a challenge made by Johnny Gargano and backed up by the Street Profits and Matt Riddle. Why not have one match to kind of settle it? If we beat you guys, go back to NXT UK. We don't want to see you guys. And Walter kind of agrees to it and he says, OK, you seem to want a war. Let's fight in war games. The four of us against the four of you. And if we lose, we will kind of stick our tail between our legs and head back to the UK brand. 
and so it is set at TakeOver War Games. Imperium will be facing off against the Street Profits and Matt Riddle, who by now is pretty much 100%, and Johnny Gargano in what is his first match since TakeOver Toronto. Now, my reasoning for this kind of lineup, I want no Undisputed Era really in this War Games. They've been in the last two matches. It leaves Adam Cole available to defend his title. It leaves Roderick Strong possibly around to fight for the North American title. It gives us a sensible storyline reason why the Undisputed Era of Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish aren't getting straight into the title picture with the Street Profits again. Obviously they won't be defending their belts on this takeover because they're involved in this War Games match. It's about time Johnny Gargano was kind of in this big feature match for NXT. He's done pretty much everything else. And I think the other three guys are very deserving of being in this match as well. And obviously the four on four concept to mirror what we had last year. We've got the four guys of Imperium as well. That makes sense. They are one big cohesive unit. Also, it gets the WWE United Kingdom belt on NXT TV a little bit more as well and on another TakeOver show. Now to break with tradition of the previous couple of years, rather than have singular competitors in to begin with, we are going to start off in tag team format where we will have the Street Profits starting off against Eichner and Bartel. And then after a time, one competitor from each team will enter at the same time to kind of keep things even. And then after another set bit of time, the final competitor enters. So we start off 2v2, then we go to 3v3, and then finally we end up 4v4. However, when it comes time for the third members to join, Matt Riddle wants to kind of stake his claim. Alexander Wolf comes out and joins his team. There's a little bit of an argument and Johnny Gargano makes his way out instead of Matt Riddle. He kind of forces him back, much to Matt Riddle's annoyance. But he's like, okay, go on then, you do you. And allows Johnny Gargano to join the match. So we have the Street Profits and Johnny Gargano facing off against Eichner, Bartel and Wolf. And then when the final competitors are released, Volta joins his team and Matt Riddle finally gets to enter. Unfortunately, though, he gets jumped on his way down to the ring by Killian Dane. Playing off a bit more that unity between Dane and Wolf. Obviously, Killian Dane is from Northern Ireland, so he's going to have some kind of affiliation and kind of care for the NXT UK brand, even though he hasn't been on it yet. Maybe he could make a couple of appearances between now and then. And just to really kind of stick it to Matt Riddle once more, who by this time has made a full recovery, Dane completely takes him out. So unfortunately we have a four on three situation and the four of Imperium are really getting one over on Gargano and the Street Profits for a good sort of five to ten minutes. But as it looks like all hope is lost, Tommaso Ciampa makes his return. Now WWE have said that he has returned to non-contact activity back at the performance center that was sort of back at the beginning of august now i know this is a war games match but we can make sure we get a lot of the kind of high dangerous spots in as soon as possible so as to kind of protect champa's neck as much as possible don't forget this will be taking place in late november so we've got a good few months yet for him to be able to get into a position where he can actually be being physical in the ring. He makes his way into the match to try and even things up and manages to kind of get the good guys back on side. However, as he is obviously the freshest of the three guys, he kind of gets cornered. And just as he is about to be taken out by the other four guys, 
specifically with them kind of focusing in on his neck. Johnny Gargano effectively sacrifices himself and takes the bullet for Champa. This lays him out completely and allows Imperium to win the match. So I know we're kind of dealing Gargano and Champa defeats in their first matches back, especially Champa, his first match for quite some time. But we can keep developing the Gargano Champa relationship, especially with Gargano trying to protect Champa, even though the last time they were in the ring they were kind of at each other's throats. Although obviously Champa did kind of come out when Gargano won the NXT title at TakeOver earlier in the year. The Street Profits have been in there from the beginning, so they lose nothing in losing. And because Imperium win, this effectively allows them and other NXT UK guys and girls to kind of make more scheduled appearances on the main NXT show. This makes perfect sense with the show going to two hours and being live very soon. In fact, obviously, by the time War Games happens, it will have been live and for two hours for a couple of months. So you're kind of building your roster up a little bit more. It gives some of the higher profile NXT UK people a bit more exposure. It gives them that chance to be on live television as well. And obviously with the way that things happen over in NXT, they're able to kind of access the bigger performance centre and the mines over there as well while they're over working in the US. It also really puts over the NXT UK brand to the NXT audience and it gives those people that are watching on the network more of a reason to view NXT UK as a viable extra show to watch. So there we go, that is my booking of NXT versus NXT UK. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments below and if there are any storylines specifically you would like me to book or any prior WWE storylines that have existed on television that you would like me to rebook, please let me know those in the comments below as well. But until next time, I have been that British guy and I will see you very soon. Goodbye.